Hello, everybody. It's approximately 5.30 here in Fort Worth, Texas. Welcome to the Daily Sports Kick. It's brought to you by Hit the Horn Podcast. I'm your host, Will Compton. Obviously, this is my first ever live stream of this, of the Daily Sports Kick. I'm super pumped about it. Uh, It's overcast here in Fort Worth, so not a whole lot of light coming in, but... We're going to make do with what we've got. Great weekend in sports. Sorry I missed yesterday. I was trying to get all organized for today's stream. First time. Hopefully everything runs smoothly. If not, we can adjust better for next time. Uh, Big lineup today. A lot of stuff going on. Uh, Great weekend in sports. Uh, We'll talk a little bit about NBA playoffs, obviously. Uh, as you may have read in the title, we're going to have my buddy Wade Pollitz come in here and talk about the draft with us for a little bit. So that'll be super fun. I'm really excited about that. Uh, we're going to talk about probably the biggest news of the weekend with Aaron Rodgers' trade of the Jets. We'll go in depth on that. And yeah, it's going to be a pretty good, pretty good episode today. Wade Pollitz will be coming in top of the hour at 6 o'clock. But yeah, with that being said, let's, uh, let's get into some NBA. Um, so many people talk about how much the NBA, they don't like the NBA and how the regular season doesn't mean anything, which 
I mean, that is probably true. A lot of the NBA games don't really mean anything, but the playoffs are – they're a different animal. I mean, the, the games that we've seen these last three, four, five days have been – they've been very good. Uh, let's start with our, our title favorites, the Los Angeles Lakers – Besting the Memphis Grizzlies 117 to 111 in overtime two nights ago. I tell you what, man, LeBron James is the real deal. As you know, we talk about winners first on the show. Um, so the highlights from the winners: LeBron had 22, 11, or 22, 20, and seven. First ever Laker to go 20, or oldest Laker to ever go 20 and 20. First time to go 20 and 20 in his career at age 38. I don't think Michael Jordan could have done that, but that's neither here nor there. D'Lo three, hit the three biggest shots. Hit the three biggest shots of the night. I tell you what, man, they needed a spark from him. LeBron wasn't getting it done. They couldn't really buy anything on offense, and LeBron get and D'Lo gave it to him when they needed it most. He was able to, you know, go in there and show him what time it is. D'Lo's kind of been struggling all series, so for him to go in there and hit three big. Three big threes, back to back to back. Nine run, nine zero run by himself was huge. Uh, Austin Reeves, pretty good night. Twenty three six and four off the bench. Hart, uh, Dennis Schroeder was the leading scorer with twelve one and zero rebounds. But tell you what, his impact was great. But the biggest story I think is obviously LeBron not being clutch. So I've heard that said so many times. LeBron can't score down the stretch. LeBron's scared to shoot. He's afraid to go to the basket. Well, he didn't have it last night, and he hit two of the biggest shots, one to send him to overtime and one to basically win the game for him. And I tell you what, I, I, I this stat has been talked about a lot this week on different channels and different networks, but I'm going to pull it up. I think it's a very crazy stat. Um Phil goes to take the lead or tie in the fourth quarter or overtime with one or fewer seconds left in the playoffs since 1999. LeBron is 7-12, and 12. Uh, 58%, whereas all the other MVPs in that time are 6 for 45. And I had a buddy of mine say, oh, that's such a cherry pick stat, like point, you know, with one less than one second left. That doesn't necessarily mean, you know, the game's going to be over. Where are the two, three, four-point shots? Which is fair. That, that is a good argument. But – I mean, the MVPs had 45 opportunities to do it, right? It wasn't like LeBron had 12 and everyone else had, you know, maybe 20 combined. I mean, they had 45 attempts and they made six. So that's at 13%, which is just crazy to me that this notion that LeBron's not clutch. And obviously, Jordan's not in this list. And if he was, I think, you know, he'd be right there in the conversation. But this this notion that I think Jordan might is more clutch than LeBron, obviously. But this notion that LeBron's not clutch, LeBron can't finish games, I think the only reason people say that is because of the greatest Cinderella story of all time in 2011 when Dirk Nowitzki single-handedly beat the Big Three. But other than that, I mean, LeBron, especially in the playoffs, is about as clutch as you can get. He, um, I mean, he really, I don't know, he showed it last night, especially in a game where he didn't play all that well. Obviously, he had 20 and 20. But, I mean, he was 1 for 7 for 3, 8 for 18 from the field. Like, he couldn't really buy a basket except down the stretch in an overtime. Um, like I said, we're big LeBron guys on the Daily Sports Kick. But we, we can't talk about this game without talking about Anthony Davis and his poorest performance once again in a big playoff game. 12 points, only 9 in the first three – or 4 in the first three quarters, I believe. 11 boards. Two assists. He played. He had two big buskets in overtime, but I mean, the rest of it, that doesn't excuse his effort throughout the game. And that's what's so disappointing about Anthony Davis is he's got so much talent. Like he has games where he'll you know drop thirty and fifteen or thirty and twelve, where it's like it looks easy for him. He's out there dominating, and the same team will have performance like this where he goes, you know, four for thirteen. 11 rebounds is pretty good, but he should be getting more than that. If LeBron's getting 20 rebounds, Anthony Davis should be getting a bit bigger share of that. Um, but, I mean, Anthony Davis needs to figure it out. He, Anthony Davis is kind of – he's really hard to read for me because he's so talented. He's on a great team. He's got a great leader in front of him, but he just can't seem to – he has these games where he just mentally can't get over the hump, and I just don't understand 
what that comes from and how that happens, right? He has so much talent to get 12 points. And it would be one thing if he was consistently, you know, if he was consistently good, right? He, you know, 24, 26, 33, then maybe every once in a while he had a bad game. But it's like one step forward, two steps back for this guy. And he, I, and I love Anthony Davis. I think he's going to play a big role. Obviously, he had that amazing season in the bubble. Like, I'm not saying Anthony Davis is a bad player, but, I mean, he's not showing up in big games. What's the point of having him? Uh, we kind of talked about, uh, we talked about Draymond a little bit ago, uh, a couple days ago, and possibly a trade between AD and Draymond Green. Obviously, that's pretty far-fetched, but it kind of secures both of their needs. So, I mean, that could possibly be in the works. Um, Jared Vanderbilt had a pretty good game, uh, 15, 1, and 6. But, I mean, his de- his defense, he only played 20 minutes last night. Or was it last night? Yes, last night. So, I mean, he didn't play a whole lot. But, I mean, LeBron leading the team in minutes is a little bit frightening, considering he's obviously old. But, I mean, the Lakers got to be – they got to be thrilled to get out of this game and go up 3-1. And obviously, in Jaw, all right, let's talk about the uh, Grizzlies for a little bit. Jaron Jackson, 14, 14, and 1. Dylan Brooks, the villain, that is horrible. He's just kind of like the scum on your, he's like the gum on the bottom of your shoe. He's just annoying, but doesn't provide any value. 11, 4, 11, 5, and 4, and that was his best game by far, these playoffs. Um, Desmond Bain was hot last night, 36, 7, and 3. Um, Jaw, 19, 4, and 7. Okay game from him, but his hand is obviously bothering him. I mean, you can see every time he goes to the basket, he puts it in his right hand. He's tensing up. I mean, he's finishing just fine, but, I mean, you can you can tell it's bothering him a little bit, which sucks because, obviously, you want to see something better than that. But um, Tyus Jones, two points off the bench. Luke Kennard, six points. Three of those were garbage minutes. Uh, no real bench production from the Grizzlies last night, which kind of hurt them. But, I mean, if obviously they're going back to Memphis, so they got to steal. I mean, it's they're down 3-1, which I can't imagine if you're a Grizzlies fan, you're thrilled with that. Obviously not. Um, this Lakers team is, is beatable. Can the Grizzlies do it three times in a row? We'll see. I mean, if Desmond Bang gets hot, Maybe, you know, you get a little bit from Jaw. Jaron Jackson has another big game like he did in game one. You know, maybe you've got something there. But um, I think they're still – I think the Lakers are going to take this one pretty easily. But they've got a lot they got to figure out before they play whoever it is they play in the next round, whether it's um, the Kings or the Warriors. Because both of those teams, that's the best series, I think. I think we all know who's going to win it now that Darren Fox has got his finger hurt. But we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But, yeah, uh, Lakers over Memphis, 117-111. Series 3-1 going back to Memphis. All right. Let's talk about the other playoff game from the other night. Playoff Jimmy, baby. It's a real deal. If you don't know, ask somebody about it, and they'll tell you. Playoff Jimmy Butler is, I mean, he's one of the best playoff performers that we've seen in a long time. He's what Kawhi Leonard thinks he is. I, I saw uh, someone say that, and I thought that was so true. Like, he plays defense. He hustles. He doesn't really have a great regular season, just like Kawhi. But I tell you what, I mean, Kawhi's got a knee sprain. No one even knows what that is. No one even saw the play that it happened. And Jimmy Butler went for 56 last night. Um, so, obviously, we're talking about winners first on this show because we like to win. Jimmy Butler – 56, 9, and 2 on 15, uh, 19 of 28, a very efficient night. Uh, and that was about all of their scoring. Bam, obviously, 56 is a lot. Um, Bam had 15, uh, 15, 8, and 2, so pretty, pretty not too shabby from him. I mean, obviously, not having Tyler Hero hurts them. Obviously, like this team, if this team had Tyler Hero, like they would be, they'd be serious. Because Jimmy can explode like this, and he just, I mean, the fact that Milwaukee blew that lead last night is it's concerning if you're a uh, if you're a Buck fan, I would I mean, that's not what you want to see, I mean, at all, obviously. And now it's three one Miami going back to your house. I mean, 
they just look so they look so spotty. They can't even really defend all that well. Giannis even played pretty decent last night. I mean, twenty he had a triple double, twenty six, ten, and thirteen. I mean, he played pretty well. Brooke, Lo- they got an explosion from Brook Lopez, thirty six, eleven, and zero. I mean, he looked. I mean, they looked good. It's just they can't. They couldn't stop Jimmy. And I've, we've said this before, and I'll say it again: the West is all offense, and the East is all defense, right? And when they can't get any production from their contributors, like what do you what do you want from them, right? They can't they can't score and they can't defend. I mean, that's it. Um, like I said, Jimmy Butler is such a special player to watch, especially come playoff time. Like he's just, I mean, he's a beast. He's so fun to watch. They're never out of games. He can single handedly win games by himself. He's done it for the last five years. I mean, if you're Miami, I mean, you got, you know, you got, you obviously got a tough way to go. But, I mean, you, you win this series, right? I mean, you're up 3-1, so assume you win this. You get Cleveland or New York, who's kind of, you know, let's, I don't want to say, but they're probably the two, they're probably the loser, of, or the winner of that, I mean, seems like a pretty, they're much easier than Milwaukee is. Whether it's probably going to be New York, I mean, they're up 3-1 too. I mean, I feel like if you're taking, if Miami, I'm taking Miami over New York in five, and then you're going to play probably Boston after that, and... I'm not sure if many people are going to agree with this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I'm taking Jimmy Butler over Jason Tatum. I think he's more reliable in the playoffs. Jason Tatum's a great player, probably first-team All-NBA guy. Um, First-team All-NBA guy, obviously he's great. Him and Jalen Brown are a great combo. But, I mean, Jimmy Butler, just to me, he can. He's. I wouldn't say he's more reliable, but I feel like he's more likely to go off for a big game and a big playoff series. Um, I don't know. That's just how I feel. Um, all right. Well, let's go ahead and look at the playoffs as a whole real quick before our buddy Wade comes in here and talks, talks shop about America's team. Um, so Milwaukee, Miami, Miami's up three to one. They're going back to Milwaukee. So I obviously think that's the series is basically over there. Miami moving up. Cleveland, New York, uh, that's been a great series, shockingly. I mean, I don't really enjoy watching their games because, I mean, watching Jalen Brunson play well hurts me. But, I mean, that series has been very competitive. Even though it's 3-1, I think it's been a pretty competitive series. Um, Obviously, Philly, 4-0 against Brooklyn. I think Brooklyn, that team is obviously – they're not a playoff roster. They just got there because of uh, what they had early in the season. Um, Boston, 3-2, Boston-Atlanta. I mean, that's a great series, too, man. <laughs> Trey Young had a great game. What was that, last night, two nights ago? Game winner from the logo. I mean, keeping a minute. Obviously, uh, game five to be back in Atlanta. So, they steal that one, game seven in Boston. That'd be pretty – I mean, that atmosphere is going to be crazy. Um, Denver, 4-1 against Minnesota. Minnesota, they've got to figure it out. They've got a lot of – obviously, they got a lot of issues – what are they going to do with Gilbert? Cause that was turns out to be one of the worst trades ever. Cat, I mean, he's Cat and Ant are so good together that I mean, it's just it's it's painful to watch them not be able to produce as well as they can. I mean, I feel like they're one or two players away from being pretty good, but I mean, we'll see what happens. Four um, one uh, Phoenix over the Clippers. That obviously is not really surprising to anybody since Kawhi Leonard just decides not to play in games. I, I, I'm i so sick of Kawhi Leonard. He's I, – I mean, if you're Steve Ballmer, you got to be furious with him, right, the owner of the Clippers? I mean, he doesn't play in big playoff games for knee sprains that don't matter. He doesn't show up in the regular season to get you a high enough seed to do anything. And Paul George isn't playing either, right? If Paul George is in that series, maybe it's different, right? And maybe Kawhi – decides to play, and Ty Lue came out and said that he feels Ky- uh, Kawhi is really hurt, but I just, this happens too often to me for me to really, well, I mean, he's he's so, the thing about Kawhi is he's so talented, I mean, he's, when he's, when he's right, he's the best two-way player in the league, I think everyone can kind of agree that, other than maybe Giannis, but, um, so, even, I mean, I guess Kawhi tore his meniscus. Thanks, Case, for letting me know that. Um, st- I still, he, I just can't get over Kawhi's personality. It's the, just the opposite of Jimmy Butler for me. And I, 
I just I don't know. I, I'm not a big Kawhi guy. I've never really been a big Kawhi guy. I think I don't know. I just I can't I can't get behind. I can't be a Kawhi Leonard Kawhi Leonard fan. And you are right. There's no way he's playing on tournaments. So that is true. But I don't know. I just I just. I, I I can't root for Kawhi Leonard, and I hate the like I hate the Clippers too, and that could be part of it. But I don't know. I just feel like I, I I'm almost about to say Kawhi is about more trouble than he's worth. I'm not saying that yet because he is just he is so talented. Like when he plays, I mean we saw it when he was in Toronto. We saw it in Game Two. Like when he's playing, he's 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 great. But I don't know. Even if he does, if, even if he's not faking injuries, he's just injury prone. Like that's almost worse to me. Like if he just is constantly getting hurt, constantly missing games, constantly load managing. What's the point of having? What's the point of paying him the max? Right? I don't know. I, I obviously I know injuries are part of the game. Injuries suck. I know that more than anybody. But I just I don't know. I like Kawhi to say something. I'm mean, obviously I know Kawhi is quiet, and that's like his personality. I get all that. But I just I don't know. I'm not on the Kawhi train. Maybe it's probably recency biased. It's probably just the way I'm feeling right now because he's not playing in big games, which is what the playoffs is all about. You want to see the best players play. And like I said, I know injuries are part of it, but it's probably recency biased, but I'm just not high. I'm not that high on Kawhi Leonard right now. And I'm curious to see what the Clippers do moving forward. Because, I mean, they've had Paul George and Kawhi for, what, three, four seasons now? And they just can't seem to get over the hump. And they have one of the best coaches in the NBA. I don't know. I'm interested to see what their offseason looks like. Uh, moving on, probably the best series that we've had, Sacramento, Golden State. Obviously, um, I, I think it's, it's even still that Darren Fox is out, I still think this is going to go to seven, just by the way this series works out. Because I don't think the Warriors are going to beat Sacramento in Sacramento. I just don't think it's going to happen. Re- even if De'Aaron Fox, since De'Aaron Fox isn't playing, I still think uh, the Warriors lose in Sacramento, come back, win in San Francisco, and then go back to Sacramento. And I think they'll win in seven now that De'Aaron Fox isn't there. But, I mean, obviously that just sucks because I I feel so bad for the Kings because they've had such a good year. They've had such a good run. They've had the Warriors on the ropes basically every game they've played. And to have an injury like that, just it hurts. But, um... Like I said, I think Warriors in seven there. Um, and then, obviously, Memphis, L.A. We kind of just talked about that. Um, Memphis, L.A., obviously, 3-1, going back to Memphis. But I think that series is over. Um, the Grizzlies, I don't know. I'm not sure what the Grizzlies are going to do. But um, since we got a little bit of time before Wade comes on, uh, I want to talk about this – notion that Trey Young is going to get traded this offseason. Um, I'm interested to see if Atlanta... I, th- I think, obviously, what happens in this Boston series will decide whether he stays or goes. But um, Trey Young, I mean, he's a great player. Whatever team, whatever player gets him is going to be great. I was talking to some of my Pelicans friends, and um, they were trying to tell me that they would have rather have Zion currently than Trey Young. And I just can't... I can't get behind that. I mean, Zion has played, what, a total of 30 games in his career? I mean, obviously, it's more than that. Obviously, he's great. He's got all this talent, but similar to the Kawhi thing, right? I mean, if you're not going to play, why have you? And obviously, I know that's crazy to say, to have Trey Young over Zion. Obviously, I don't really mean that, but the the principle of it's still there, right? If... I mean, if Zion's not going to play, if Zion, if Zion can't stay healthy, if Zion's going to stay overweight and keeps getting hurt, then I'm not sure that, you know, I don't know. It's kind of an interesting situation. And obviously, Trey Young, I, I think uh, it's pretty interesting how the stars of whatever team it is, whatever sport, kind of embody the city they're in, right? Um, and I think Atlanta and Trey Young go together like, I mean, it's just a perfect mix. And I think that's pretty – I think when that happens, it's good. And I, I hope he stays in Atlanta because I think Atlanta – this the basketball is better when Atlanta is good, in my opinion, especially because I, – I mean, I love Trey Young. I think he's great. I'm probably higher on Trey Young than I should be, but what are you going to do? Um, like I said, I love – I think – I think if 
Trey Young does get moved, I think whatever team gets him is going to be really, really glad they did. Um, because if, if you're Atlanta, I'm not really sure what your steps forward are going to be if you don't make it out of the first round this year. You know what I mean? They're kind of stuck in purgatory, kind of like, kind of, but not exactly like the Vikings in football, where it's like, they've got this star player that they need to pay, they need to keep around, but if they can't really get over the hump, then how long are you going to sit around, right? I don't know. That's probably a bad comparison, but I love Trey Young. I think he's great. I love his personality. I love what he brings to the city of Atlanta. I love what he brings to the Hawks. I love, I love, I love it. I think it's great. So I hope he sticks around, but... I don't know. I just think it's pretty interesting. Maybe one day we'll, when at the end of the season, we'll we'll uh, do it either or, and I'll flash up some point guards, and I'll say if I'd rather have them or Trey Young. I think I'd have more Trey Young than y'all would probably imagine, but we'll see. All right. Um, let's see. Any other NBA before before Wade gets up here? Um. Yeah, so let's see. What else I want to talk about? I want to talk about, talk about the Mavericks for a second. How Draymond Green is going to be a Maverick. That's not true, I wish. This has been a great playoffs in general, in my opinion. The series have all been pretty good. Even the ones that have 3 1, 4 0. Like all the series have been pretty good, but what I've been really proud of is. How many like fans have been at the games? How the atmospheres look? I mean that that matters. That's cool. That's what sports is all about, right? And um, I mean we've we've gotten some great series. Sacramento Golden State's been a great series. Um, Lakers Grizzlies has obviously been a great series. Before Kawhi got hurt, Phoenix L.A. I'm curious. Um, I wonder what. I'm, I'm interested to see how the next round looks. There'll be some pretty good matchups. Uh, Miami, New York is going to be pretty awesome. Philly, Atlanta, or Boston, either one, that's going to be great. Uh, if James Harden can find it, that's going to be a great series because we know what Embiid's going to do. Um, Embiid is so good. He better win MVP. He's so good. Um, Denver, Phoenix is going to be a great series. I mean, <laughs> number one playoff minutes right now. Or number one most minutes in the – in the playoffs is Kevin Durant, number two, Devin Booker, and number five is Chris Paul. They're playing the crap out of their starters. And I'm just and they have no bench help. And so a quick series with LA was huge for them. But um they didn't benefit from Denver, Minnesota being a short series though. I mean the, the I'm interested to see if K D, Book, and Chris Paul can extend it beyond, you know, two or three rounds. I mean they're so talented. The, one of the most talented trios we've seen in a long time. But, I mean, they're playing so many minutes. We'll see what happens in the conference finals, NBA finals. They're going to need their bench to show up at some point. And if they don't, then I'm not sure what. I mean, if they don't, if their bench doesn't show up, they're not going to win. Bench and co- bench and defense wins in the playoffs, right? So, and if they don't have any bench, that's half the battle. Especially a team like L.A. or Golden State or Sacramento that is super deep, that can play a lot of guys. I don't know. it will be interesting to see how it all works out, especially because, I mean, Kevin Durant and Devin Booker are unreal. Chris Paul, I think, gets a little bit more love than he probably should. I think people think it's still the 2014, 2015 Chris Paul. Not to say he can't play, but I just, I, I think people are giving him a little more credit than he probably deserves. Um, Yeah. All, all in all, great playoffs. Um, we'll talk NHL for a hot second. Um, obviously, Wild lost last night. Very sad. Um, I was supposed to go to the game, but I ended up having a paper that I had to write, so that really sucks, but it's part of it. Um, 4-0, which kind of stinks, but, I mean, it's, just, it's a great time of year. we got to soak it all in because, I mean, we got NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, draft tomorrow, Baseball starting up. It's the you know, bet opening part of the playoffs or opening part of the season is great in the MLB. The first, you know, month is always great and then the playoffs are always great, but here in about six weeks it's gonna be really grim for sports. When it's just off seasons in baseball, it's gonna get it's gonna get grim.
Um, shoot. Um. Well, let's let's pick let's pick series here while we're while we're waiting on old old Wade boy. Um, so obviously we've got L.A. over Memphis, three one series is over. Um, so I'm taking L.A. there. One second, there we go. I'm taking L.A. there. I'm taking Golden State, and then I'm taking the Lakers over the Golden State Warriors. Um, I'm taking Phoenix over Denver. So we're going to have LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Western Conference Finals. And I'm going to take Boston over Philly. No, sorry, sorry. Boston over Atlanta. Philly over Boston. I'm taking Miami over New York. So then we've got New York. New York, Philly. Suns, and Lakers for a Western Conference Finals. And I'm taking, I'm taking the Lakers, baby. I'm taking the Lakers to make the finals this year. Versus the versus the Sixers, and then oh, Sixers Lakers would be an unreal finals. I think that'd be that might be the best finals that we get. It would be Lakers Sixers. <sighs> Who would I pick in that? Probably the Sixers. I mean, I don't know. That'd be a great series. I mean, I'm taking the Lakers. I mean, one of them has the greatest player to ever play. One of them doesn't. So I'm taking. I am taking the Lakers on that one. Uh, is that a good choice? Probably not. But Lakers win the NBA Finals. I can't believe I just picked that. So when it happens, place your futures now. Place your futures now. Um. I'm really excited to see what Way has to say about the NBA draft. He said he was a draft expert, so I took his word for it. I think he is. I think he knows what he's talking about. Um, I mean, I wore my cowboy shirt just for him. So, hopefully he acknowledges it and likes it. Um, I wish the, I wish the Mavericks were playing, man. I really do. But, well, can't always get what we want, I guess. Sorry, technical difficulties here. I'm trying to. Let me see. Um, while we try to get Wade in here, y'all have any questions for Wade that y'all wanna y'all wanna hear? Um, um who do y'all who do you want your teams to take? Let's see. Uh I think we're gonna take a quick five minute break while we'll I get all this sorted out. Um, so I'll be back with you soon.
Uh, can you hear me, Compton? Compton? Is it working? Uh, yes, give me one second. Wade. So, <laughs> how are we doing, baby? Doing good. How are you doing, Comp? Doing all right, my friend. Doing all right. Let me make sure that you're good on the stream end. You should be, but let's just make sure. Never hurts to double check. Good on the stream end. You should be, but let's just say something. Make sure. Uh, what's up, Comp? Never hurts to double check. Good on the. Can you hear me? Stream end. You should be. But let's just say something. Make sure. Uh, what's up, Comp? Perfect. All righty. <laughs> Wade Pollitz, the man with the plan. Yep. How you doing, my friend? Doing all right? How's school today? Good? Doing good. Had a busy day yesterday, but today wasn't too bad. Nothing much going on. Well, How about you? Um, hey, man. Doing all right. Doing good. Trying to, you know, trying to fight through. You know how it is. It's always a tough, tough school time, but. Yeah. We're making it happen. We're making it happen. Huh? Um, all right. So, obviously, I wore my Cowboys shirt for you. I don't know how much of a big mm -hmm. Cowboys guy you are. I wanted to make exactly. sure you felt rep you felt huge, represented. Huge fan. Oh well, I'm just I'm glad that you feel that way. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were kind of talking earlier about um, like where quarterbacks are from and if that plays an impact and how like you think a quarterback will go like. I'm always a big believer that like, a big school quarterback is always a better pick than like, a small school quarterback, whether it's – I mean, you, ex history shows us that. I mean, obviously, there's some exceptions to that. But, I mean, I feel like history just kind of tells us, you know, that's always what, a better pick than like, a small school quarterback. That's whether, the way it is. Whether it's, you know, Tom Brady being from mm -hmm. Michigan, Peyton Manning from uh, Tennessee, whereas someone like Tony Roma from nowhere state just kind of peters out. So how do you feel like that? ways in, especially this year with Will Levis versus Bryce Young versus CJ Stroud, all that stuff. Yeah, so like if, if you take a look at the starting quarterbacks in the NFL, almost all of them, I believe, uh, played at a Power 5 school, except for um, Allen, Josh Allen, of course, who went to Wyoming, and then uh, Garoppolo, who actually went to, I think, Tony Romo's school, uh, like Eastern Illinois or something like that. But I'm right. pretty sure everybody else, every other starter – uh, for the most part, played at a Power 5 school. So then you got to look at, like, the bigger programs, like you were saying, Bama, Tennessee, talked about. Um, but I think – I really think it doesn't really matter, to be honest, if you went to Bama as opposed to um, Purdue. Like, if you look at Drew Brees, he went to Purdue. Well, um, I mean, I think there's always exceptions, obviously. Like, I would even yeah. say that, like – I would even say Mahomes is even a little bit of an exception because, like, Tech yeah. is not this super huge powerhouse school. But I like, think it more so doesn't matter exactly where you play. It's kind of who you play. Yeah, I think, that's a good, I think that's a good way to put it, yeah. Because it's not, you know, you, but it's a good way to judge on who you go up against rather yeah, than right. who's on your own team Well, I just the, like how big the program is. Because if you look at, like, do you consider Stanford to be a big program, a big school? I mean, no, but I would say Stanford has played in big games, and quarterbacks that have gone there have played in big games, right? That's that's my thing, right? Is Tony Romo hadn't played a big game in his life until he got to. I see. So, like, yeah. yeah. So, like, even but, I mean, it, but if you're in a Power Five school, I feel like every Power Five conference revolves around big games. There's, yeah, you're I mean, I agree, but game. I mean, you're talking about like high stakes, like yeah, going to yeah, yeah, like. Or, yeah. like Gotcha. I mean, I mean, take Trevor Lawrence for example, right? He played in three national right. championships. He played in three state championships in high school, and most mm -hmm. quarterbacks are like that. But I mean, I see we'll, we'll talk about this. Like Will Levis, for example, didn't play in an SEC championship. He played in big games, right? But at the end of the day, none of them really had any serious stakes. So I'm just curious where yeah. you value that compared to maybe, like, obviously Bryce Young playing in big games, CJ Stroud playing in big games. Not that Will, not to diminish what Will Levis has done, and Will Levis is tremendously talented. He's tremendously smart, but I'm just curious if you think that's just kind of a co not a coincidence, but if that's just like a fact, or if that's just the way it's kind of always been. But it seems like you, I, I, mean, I think saying. it, I think it's definitely valuable that some of these quarterbacks have played in either huge bowl games, major rivalry games within their conference, or like national championships, like Bryce Young, Mac Jones, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, Jalen Hurts, uh, those guys. But um, I think in general, like, 
it it's not that big of a deal. I mean, it's obviously a nice caveat to have a quarterback who's played in those big moments because if you want to win a high level in the NFL, you're obviously going to have to be in those big moments. Of course. And I think you can guess – I guess you can kind of say, like, Josh Allen, he never had that. Yeah, and, and so and I was about to say, and the two quarterbacks that you, you mentioned. I'm not going to say he's choked in the playoffs, but he hasn't looked as that's, good as he's looked. That's exactly what I was going to say. You look at Josh Allen's playoff career and Garoppolo's playoff career, like – both of them are not all that special and all that great, right? Whereas, and obviously, it, football is not – one person doesn't make a football team, but we just put so much pressure on a quarterback. Like, you want your quarterback to be smart. You want your quarterback to be, you know, pretty professional, right? And I think uh, – I mean, we you we know how much we love Dion, right? But, I mean, he had a – and he even – this is probably an extreme, but he's like, I want my, like, quarterbacks to be from, like, two-parent households. And, obviously, that's extreme and that's a little bit much, but that – idea still kind of holds true that a more traditional big game quarterback is someone over like, like I'm, I know I'm, this is a lot of bashing of Will Levis. I'm not trying to bash Will Levis, but like taking pics in front of the mirror and posting all that. And I don't know, just kind of a different, I'm not sure I would want that no, I'll, I'll, quarterback. I'll take shots at Will Levis. Yeah. I don't, I don't like him. I, I think he's a tool and I really don't think he's that good either, but uh, to kind of your point about the whole quarterback thing is um, a good example is Kirk Cousins. He yeah, didn't true. Playing that many big games in college, and, and then, neither uh, did that. He right? beat Mich- He beat Michigan a couple times, but like Michigan wasn't that good. Um, and he is completely choked in primetime games in the regular season yep. and the playoffs. It's crazy how and was he up- was he the quarterback for Michigan State when they got killed by Bama? That's that's I don't know probably no I don't think I don't think it was him but I mean that is that is a good point what you were saying but, yeah. but um well since we're talking about quarterbacks who do you think are the most talented quarterbacks and where would you say like the break is like I think these three guys are the best and then after that's just kind of you know they're all just kind of second rounders third rounders after that like what right. who are your favorites and what do you think the cutoff is um. So I think there's a very clear top five in this year's draft. It's Young, Stroud, Levis, Richardson, and Hooker. Yep. Um, I personally really like Hendon Hooker. Um, I think he's a stud, but he is like 24 years old or something yeah. like that. Um, and he is coming off an ACL, uh, so that's one thing to consider. Um, <clears throat> I think AR Anthony Richardson's a complete project. Uh, Cause he really wasn't that good in college. He also barely played in college. Yeah, uh, true. Um, so we didn't see he. He's not someone that can come into the NFL day one and start. No shot. No shot. You don't think? think it, no shot. Anthony Richard. No. I think a good fit for him would be Seattle and let yeah, him sit be behind G, sit behind Gino, Gino for a year or two, and then he could take over. And I've seen stuff that Seattle likes him, and I think that'd be a good spot. But yeah, I think outside of that top five. There's a big drop off. Yeah, I think I think the other guys. Uh, I've seen some stuff about the Fresno State guy, um, and then stuff about the Houston guy, um, and then the Purdue guy. So something the Broncos really like him or something, but I don't think those guys are anywhere near the talent level of those top five. Yeah, well, um, so obviously you're a Saint guy. So, um, who do you want the Saints to take in the first round, and what are you kind of looking for for them for the rest of the, you know, rest of the draft, and how how do you see the rest um, of the offseason going for the Saints? So, like, the, we're at twenty nine because we got the pick from the Broncos for the Sean Payton trade, and we our first round pick was traded to the Eagles, because to move up and get Olave from last draft, yeah, which and I think was worth it, it, which I think was worth it, but it is the tenth pick in this year's draft. So the Eagles are sitting with the tenth pick. So, but yeah. it, I mean, it, but it's worth it. I I love Chris Olave, and we had another. Fir- we had two first round picks last year. We took a left the tackle named Trevor tackle, Penning, yep. but he's battled injuries all rookie year. But um, so we're sitting at twenty nine, and to me, I think there's a glaring need at maybe not glaring need, but there's definitely a need at defensive tackle. Uh, we only have three on the roster. Two of them are new guys, and one of them's just kind of a rotational he's he hasn't he's not much of a productive player so i really like kalaja kansi at a pit uh he's a bit undersized but his pass skills are off the charts he's 
very athletic and his skills brushing the passer are, are incredible. Um, but I've also seen stuff about I, – but I do think we're going to have to trade up and to get him, which the Saints are not shot of that. They 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 constantly trade up in the draft. It's what they do ever since we've had Mickey Loomis as our GM. Yeah. Um, it's what they do. They never trade down. So I think if they really believe Cansey is their guy, they're going to trade up to maybe the early 20s, high teens, and go get um, Elijah Cansey. Or or a guy the guy that whatever guy they like I expect them to trade up in this year's draft because signing Carr and keeping a bunch of the veterans on this team we're still trying to win now yeah of course so I think they're they're gonna say screw it if they have to give up next year's first or two seconds or whatever they're gonna if they have a guy they like they're gonna go up and get him get him yeah uh, but as for the rest of the draft I really really like and I've seen stuff that the Saints kind of like him too is Steve Avila oh yeah. TCU's left guard Hell because yeah. um, the current Saints starting left guard is uh, Andrews Pete, and this is his last year. He's one year left on his deal, and it's kind of the writing's on the wall that he, this is his last year here, and he's always hurt. So I think Steve Avila will be a great pick because he's Pete always gets hurt, so he's going to get a little playing time this year, and then he's going to be your starting left guard for the future. So I'd love – to yeah, pick that would be a good spot for him. We have pick forty in the second round, and if he's there at forty, I would love to take a Vila. I would love, I would love a Vila to be a, a cowboy, mm-hmm. learn from Zach Martin, and go from there. Because Zach, I'm not sure how much longer Zach Martin's got, but, but I, I think I, also, I think everyone's that way, right? He's such a, I mean, he's a great guy, he's a great talent. I mean, everyone's gonna want a piece of him. So, I would also like a <clears throat> D end. I'm a little worried there. Um, the pass rush wasn't too great last year. Another reason why I wanted to pitch a tackle is we ranked like 23rd or 24th or something like that in rush defense. So we need improvement up front. Uh, plus our yeah. D-line coach just left him going to be the coordinator for the Falcons. So that's not yeah. great. Um, but I also, and I'm sure you do, would like a running back. Uh, this running back class is very good. You know. And with, with Zeke gone and then Pollard coming off the injury, this yeah. running back class is very deep, and I, I think a lot of them are really good. I think there's a reason I'm not an NFL GM. Obviously, I think my ideas of what teams need is a little bit strayed. But I'm I'm under the belief, I just just as a general rule, that if there's a running back that's not taken in the first five picks, you should not take one in the first round. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think – I think obviously there's exceptions like Derrick Henry and possibly Bijan. So on- yeah, what do you think Bijan is? Is Bijan? I mean, a top ten pick he could be, but I mean the fact that he could be, I think we, you know, here's the thing with the Cowboys, right? I've seen so much about us like thinking tight end, tight end, tight end, and I feel like that's the only position, in my opinion, that's the only position that we can draft where I consider it a loss in the first round. Not first on the playoffs, but a loss of a first round draft pick, right? Because I mean, obviously, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I wasn't saying the Cowboys should take a first round running back, but somewhere in this draft, I think they should definitely. Oh take yeah, a I agree. Back. I agree. Yeah. I think I think yeah. uh, second or third round guy could be pretty good. I mean, yeah, that's all I was saying for the Saints. I because there's a lot of good running backs, but uh, I want to ask you, what tight ends do you like then? What's your number one guy? I, I don't want to take a tight end first. Oh, you don't. Oh, you're no. saying. Oh, you were saying a tight end would be a loss. If we That's what I'm saying. I'm saying. I, I think prison. anything. Oh, okay. else, I think other than a tight end would be good because, like, I mean, yeah, we just kind of solved our DB problem with Gilmore, but you can never have too many young DBs, right? I think mm-hmm. a, uh, a safety could be pretty good. I mean, we're getting pretty old at linebacker. Other than obviously uh, Parsons, LVE is getting pretty old. We got kind of some new guys in there, Deron Bland, stuff like that. What about the O line? I mean, our O line is is pretty good, but once again, they're getting old. Like uh, Tyron Smith so what, has got a year. What or two would be left. Your, Would you want to trade down? Would you want to? I mean, we, what position do you want to go after? Or do you, you're just kind of like best player available as long as it's probably not a best player back. available as long as it's not a tight end. But I I think receiver could be because we we've we've, we've yeah. decided that we're not moving off Dak and. Statistics so if, and if, record if QJ, be damned. If QJ's there at 25, I would love to say QJ. Love. I don't think, I mean, he probably will be there, but I'm not, well, I'm not necessarily sure that QJ is the one that I would go for. I mean, I think if Zay Flowers is there, I think that's who we want. 
I more of a slot. There at 25. I'm but... not thinking well either, but like more of a slot guy, I think we'd be more suited for us just because, I mean. Downs out of uh, UNC. Yeah, that could be yeah, good. He's, he's really good. Because, I mean, we got CD outside and Gallup, right? Like, we're pretty good yeah. on the outside. And I and I I feel like Quentin could still be good and move CD inside. But I feel like since um, – What's his name left to Miami? Cedric Wilson. We just kind of looking for a slot guy. We haven't been able to find him. So I think that's what I would do. Just to kind of, like I said, since we were decided that we we're gonna stick with Dak, regardless of how he performs, we're sticking with Dak. Uh one of our buddies, Case, had a good idea. Like just hide him. Like get him as many options as he can have, give him the best offense he could possibly get, and just like then he has no excuses, right? I mean we But could could also could also hiding him mean having an incredible defense as well. Well, yes, but I'm not so sure our defense yeah. is the problem. Our defense right. is pretty good last year overall. I mean, we're only gonna get better with Gilmore out there. And our biggest our biggest flaw was that back it was our second corner with Diggs. And I mean Anthony Brown was already bad, and then he gets hurt, and then we get worse. Like we kind of solved that problem. So I'm not really sure we should really go defense. Unless we want to get another well, there, interior a, D lineman like you guys. It's you a are, really deep corner back draft. And it's a really deep tight end draft. Yeah. I mean, and honestly. And I'd say running back, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you asked me what I would probably get is I would, I mean, if Bijan, I don't think Bijan's going to fall to us. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was idea, there was talks that he would, but I think he just, his stock has gone up so much in the past couple of weeks. I just don't think there's no way it's going to happen. But, I mean,. I don't know. I'm not really sure what I really want. I haven't done a whole lot of research on it, but I think anything but tight end would probably be what I would go with. Receiver would be nice, but I mean, I know. This is what, why reach, why, why not a tight end? You don't think tight end should well, go? Well, I mean, we have round? two young tight ends, right? Hendershot and Ferguson. There's no reason to draft a third young tight end, right? If you're going to draft tight end, at least give these guys a year and then draft one next year, right? There's no reason to. And we took one second. Second round last year, right? There's no reason to double up on tight ends right. when just because we lost Dalton Schultz, right? And even when Dalton Schultz was battling injury last year, like Hendershot and Ferguson were fine and serviceable. Like I don't really think, unless there's like a can't miss prospect. Um, I mean Dalton Kincaid could be a pretty decent option, right? But I mean even that, like I just I feel like it's a, I'm always sure that pushes the needle enough for us to make it worth it a first round pick. Like, if we're going to take a tight end, let's we'll trade down and get some other picks and draft a tight end in the second round. But yeah. I don't know. I think this I think this draft's pretty deep. I would I, w- I really wouldn't mind the Saints to trade down, but that, that's just not what they do. So they're, they're, it's just not going to happen. Well, I know we didn't talk about this question. But I'm going to ask you anyway because I'm just curious what you think. Um, we got a lot of we got a lot of Houston Texans fans that mm-hmm. that we're friends with, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which I just can't imagine being a Houston Texans <laughs> fan. That'd be That'd be terrible. 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 Um, what would you do if you're them? Would you trade back? Would you go defense? Trade for Lamar? You taking CJ Stroud, um, Levis? What are you doing? I mean, they're just in a weird spot. I mean, first off, they completely fumbled the first pick. Yeah, it's that, at that last game of the year where they the hail mary like the or the fourth and twenty or whatever, and yeah. they screwed them. They ended up winning the game and got the second pick. So they don't even know how to lose correctly. So that's one. <laughs> Um, secondly, oh, Bryce, man. Bryce Young's the clear number one. You and think? I, yeah, I think so. And so they're going to miss out this, on him. What about all this line shifting for Will Levis? You're not buying I have no idea. What, I have no idea what that's You're not all buying about. the Reddit post? Some friend on Reddit said, oh, he's going number one. Like, I don't hey. know. That doesn't make any sense. Um, the, uh, but the I think, I think, I think they have one of the worst rosters in the league. And if they're not, oh, I in disagree. Love, you just, I mean, it's, you I mean, they, it's bad. I mean, it's bad. But I mean, I think they did make a lot of free agent signings this year. But like, if they can't, if they like, I feel like if they're not in love with Stroud or Levis, just trade down or take Will Anderson, because 
if they don't take either one of them, they're going to have Mills as their quarterback again, and they're not going to be that good. They can make an attempt for Caleb Williams or, or Drake, Drake May, May or some other quarterback. Their quarterbacks next year are, are good. Yeah, but the draft next year is much better than this year, I think, as far as quarterbacks are concerned. I mean, I think Bryce Young is pretty good, and I think CJ Shot's pretty good, but I mean, Caleb Williams and Drake May would both go number they, one. They also, the they also have the, they also have the twelfth pick, so they could they could walk away with. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's twelve. But yeah, they have twelve. They could walk away with Will Anderson, and they could walk away with Zay Flowers. Yeah, and good. I think they'd be and or Jackson Smith, the Jigba, and be fine. Yeah, I mean they but definitely. I I, 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 saw, I saw I heard something that they were like split on whether or not they should take Shroud in their organization. A lot yeah. of people like Shroud, and then people don't. So like, yeah. What I'm saying is, if if you're not fully on board with Stroud, I'm kind of with you. Do not, Tra- don't yeah, I'm force with that you. pick. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. If you're not fully in love with him, you might as well just kind of be yeah. somewhat competitive next year, and then push your chips in to go get May, Caleb Williams, something like that. Yeah, I mean, I think obviously they really it was really unfortunate what happened to John Mechie, and we obviously we pray he gets healthy. Pray he I actually just saw today he's been uh, participating in. Off-season workouts. Really? So fully, well, that's, yeah. that's a blessing. So, D'Amico Ryan said he's uh, fully cleared. Well, yeah. there you go. Well, that, see, I mean, they get him back. I mean, Jordan Petrie, or Jalen Petrie from Baylor is a good little, good little guy. So, and then uh, Derek Singley, if you can ever yep, stay healthy. Stingley. Like, they've got a pretty good young core. And they they made a say, lot of free agent signings, too. I mean, I, I, obviously, if but they're the not thing gonna is, be, like, if Davis Mills is your quarterback, you're just not going to win that many games. Oh, I agree. I agree. Yeah, but so I'm it's saying, like, like, if they can hit on this year's draft, I mean, they have two first-round picks. If they can hit on one of them, right, because obviously you're going to need more than one. Um, But, I mean, if you hit on one of them, then – you're you're terrible again this year with Will Levis. You get Drake May and CJ or CJ Stroud next year. Three years, four years from now, I mean, that's a playoff team now. Yeah, I, I think mean, possibly. So. I mean, it just Stingley, all depends on the quarterback Stingley, position. I mean, of course, obviously that makes yeah. plays. But if they get, yeah. you know, I'm not very high on Caleb Williams, but that's not what we're talking about today. But I mean, whether they get Caleb Williams, Drake May, or CJ Stroud, if they hit on that. Let their players develop a little bit. I mean, I think they're a pretty decent team. I mean, I oh, yeah. I wouldn't say they're anything but, special yet. And if you be. if you take a look at their division, I think Trevor Lawrence and the Jags are probably going to be running that division for a while because if you look at the Colts, they're going to be aggressive to draft a quarterback, and who knows if that hits. They're not looking that great because they don't have a quarterback. And then True. the Titans, the Titans are in a bad spot. True. But Titans if you're, in spot. they're selling house. They yeah. they traded. They cut a bunch of their players. Rumors that Henry might be gone. Malik yeah. Willis is terrible. Horrible. Uh, Ryan Tannehill, that ain't it. And then so they they might be um, in the conversation to go trade up and get Richardson, Anthony Richardson. This this uh, the Titans, guy. yeah. Um, yeah. The only thing with I, I think you're kind of on something there, right? Like Trevor Lawrence and. Whoever the Colts get, right? Whether it's Lamar or whoever it could be, I think I think Lamar is a Colt by the end of tomorrow night. Interesting. I think they draft at ten, and then after they draft their first round pick next year tomorrow night, then they trade for Lamar, give them next year's first, and then the next year's first. They're playoff teams; so those picks have no value. The reason they've been trade for him so far is because there's no market for him, and they don't want to give up tenth pick for him when they don't have to, right? Well, do, wait, doesn't Indian app? I think Indy has four. Right? Whatever, four, I'm ten, four. You know what I mean? Four. But, uh, so I, I, that's just how I feel it's gonna go. But so Lamar, I just, I don't, I don't think, I don't think Lamar Jackson gets traded. You really don't. Think I think, so. I think he screwed himself. No, I, I don't think Lamar. Jackson he shot himself. No, no team, Baltimore. no team, no other team is gonna pay him that much money and, and also give up assets to get him. No, he's, he's not, not playing. He may not get traded right now, but he's not playing another down for Baltimore. No I way. Think he's gonna, I think he's going to uh, either play on that franchise tag or come to an agreement with Baltimore. They offered him a ton of money, and he was so dumb not, not to, to take it. Because now he screwed himself. None of these teams are interested in him. Although, a cop, you would be hearing rumors of these people are clo- these teams are closing in on like rumor. You haven't heard a peep of a single team rumored to be in on Lamar Jackson. Not a peep. Well, I think it's no team because... wants him. No team's gonna 
give up assets to get him because you probably have to give up a good amount, and no team's going to give him that huge ass contract. It's not going to happen. I think I think either Indianapolis or Atlanta should go for Lamar, regardless of but how it, much it costs. But if if Indianapolis thinks they, they if they really like Stroud or they really like Levis or Anthony Richardson, I mean they're not going to trade. They're not going to trade mean, for. They're not going to trade for Lamar. Well, that could be true. Mate, let's say they're really high on Levis or Stroud or whoever it is. Let's just, let's just say it's Stroud. So they're really high on Stroud. Stroud falls to them, right? Is Stroud better than the combination of paying Lamar and drafting Will Anderson at four? Because obviously, right, like Lamar is a proven talent. He's hurt. He gets injured a lot, but he's unanimous MVP, right? He's got some talent with him, and he's proven. But you're paying him a whole lot, so that's a negative, but a positive, right? Then drafting Will Anderson would be a positive as well. So you're saying that that sum is greater than drafting CJ Stroud and waiting? It's kind of like what you're saying, right? I mean, if you look at the division, you've got Trevor Lawrence, you've got whoever they've got, nobody in Tennessee and nobody in um, Indianapolis or whatever, whoever was it. Or Houston. Houston. Houston, Houston yeah. yeah. You look at all that. And if you get Lamar now, you pay him. You guys pay him, right? That's an expensive quarterback. Trevor Lawrence, it, I mean, we still don't – are they a playoff team this year? Are they going to be better this year than last year? Is Trevor Lawrence going to make the jump? We don't really know. But division is, is full of taking is what I'm saying, right? So if you're in Indianapolis, why not go all in this year and try to get Lamar and try to be a playoff team these next two years? Yeah, the problem is, like, I feel like Indianapolis's roster isn't that bad. Like, I think it's a pretty good roster. So it's like, okay, if you don't take a quarterback this year, um, you're probably not bad enough to lose so many games to be in a position to get Caleb Williams or May. So it's like you're just like, okay, we'll, we'll win, like, six or seven games with Gardner Minshew at quarterback. And – then we'll end up with the tenth pick next year, and yeah, then we and where can't you get, get from there. And, yeah. and you can't get killed. So like, yeah, that's a good point. I think I think Indianapolis is taking a quarterback this year. They're done with the whole QB carousel they've been doing for the, ever since Andrew Luck retired. They're going to draft their guy this year. Yeah, you can I, be right. I think I think the team that's going to be the worst team in the NFL this year is going to be the Arizona Cardinals. They're terrible, terrible. Colin mean, Murray's what probably a... not going to probably not going to play at all, or. Barely what a any. poorly run team, man. I mean, that is just... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a disaster right now. Yeah, and the guy they just... Well, like, I mean... Who they hired That coach? was... They hired... Uh, I think his last name was Gannon. He was the Eagles defensive coordinator. Oh, that's right. Kind of a weird dude. I don't think that's going to work. And Buda Baker just requested a trade, their best player. Yeah. Any team that gets that guy is getting one of the best safeties, if not the best safety in the NFL. He's gonna look great with the star on the side of his head. So like I, so that that's gonna be another weird situation. Say the Cardinals are the worst team in the NFL. Do they draft Caleb Williams after giving Kyler Murray no. that contract? So like they'll trade back. Yeah. So they'll we'll, do we'll they'll see. do what uh Chicago did. They'll trade back in a bunch of picks and go from there. Cause Kyler up uh, as much as we I I, I as much as we hate Kyler, I mean, he's kind of, so I, I, a couple weeks ago, I guess last week, I did a, a segment on the show about like what different buckets different teams were based on their quarterback. And one of them, one of the buckets was um, Purgatory, where it's like, and it was the Cowboys, it was the Vikings, it was the Cardinals, and the Ravens was the teams that I put in that bucket. And it's like they can't really move off their guy. They don't really want to, but they're not, they have shades of being good, but they're just average at best. And that was Dak and obviously um, Kirk Cousins, but you can't let Kyler walk. You just paid him a whole bunch of money. He deserved to be paid. He should have been paid what he deserved. I just think the biggest thing with Kyler is immaturity. Yeah. That's the only thing holding him back. But uh, this is a little bit uh, off topic, but um did you see the other day that Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and Zay Flowers and some other guys were throwing on TCU's campus on oh, a practice yeah. field? Well, Mahomes what? lives is... Mahomes lives out in Westlake, which is like twenty okay. minutes from here. And but Travis Kelsey came in and and I got like reports on my phone that like Chiefs really want to trade up for 
Zay for Flowers. Zay Flowers. Oh yeah. And and they they even threw with Mahomes. And then I just found out today that was literally two minutes from where we live. Yeah. Like, Travis Kelsey, Zay Flowers, and Mahomes were throwing. Oh yeah, the whole TCU. basically the whole. And I'm pretty sure uh, some of the coaches were there too. And they, well, Mahomes has been working out with Quentin all summer. Mm. Like every time, every time that uh, Mahomes has been up here, which has been three or four times this summer, Quentin's been up there with him. That's and, interesting because, like, D, uh, the Chiefs might want to trade for D Hop. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So, like, did they trade for D Hop or did they, they draft Quentin Johnson? Like, I mean, they could do both. Yeah, I mean, their receiver uh, room is so so average right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, they did. They did just lose Hardman. I'm pretty sure. So they lost Hardman. They lost Juju. It wasn't that great. Yeah, I mean, Juju. he was their number one. Yeah, I mean, they need he's to a add two. Him. He's a two at best. Juju is, but he was their one last year. I mean, if they can draft up and get Zay or trade for D-Hop or get Quentin, like, you give Mahomes all that with yeah, Andy I think Reed. Zay Flowers. I think Zay Flowers is really good. They're not paying <laughs> Pacheco anytime soon. I mean, yeah, I don't they know. They need to reload at receiver. Yeah, they don't but really I mean, have anyone. I mean, do, but do they? I mean, they won a Super Bowl with Juju Smith-Schuster as the best quarterback or as the best yeah. receiver, right? Like, yeah. as much as they need to reload, do they? With, like, Juju and Hardman being gone. Well, Hardman was hurt for most of the year, wasn't he? Can't remember, honestly. But I feel like they're just, like, thin at receiver, and, like, all it takes is a Travis Kelsey injury, and then they're screwed. Yeah, true. That's that's a good point. So, I don't know. And you know, Andy Reid wants to always load up on offense, so. Yeah. He's going to go get some receivers. They drafted Sky Moore last year, who had some moments. But we'll see. Yeah, well, all right. New Orleans record next year. What's it going to be? Oh, Where are they going? I have no idea. Where are they going? Uh, Let me hear it. I think, I think they're the favorites in the NFC South. I think the real competition is – Well, you um, heard what I said about the NFC South a couple days ago, didn't you? Wait, what was it? Oh, oh that it's Carolina's division to lose? Oh, yeah. yeah oh, right. yeah. No, oh, I yeah. am a little scared of Carolina. I they would be. Completely, their defense is going to be good, and then if Bryce Young can have an immediate impact, they're, they'll be good. But I do think it's the anyway, Saints division ahead. to lose. I think it's the Saints division to lose. I'm not yeah. ecstatic about the Derek Carr signing. Really? I kind of liked it, actually. I mean, a 30 – two-year-old quarterback that's maybe the 10th best quarterback in the NFL and you give them that much money. I'm not yeah, that ecstatic maybe, about it. Maybe, maybe. Really not. Yeah, I might he be. He has had, he has a, a very unstable career in terms of the organization with the Raiders. Very unstable. So many hunt coaches, so much drama, so much bullshit going on over there. So the Saints are a very stable organization, but it might be too late in his career for that. You're already yeah. 32 or whatever, how old, however old he is. But the roster is still very good. Um, if they can hit in this draft and then maybe sign some guys um, for training camp, I think they'll I think they'll win the NFC South. And their schedule is pretty easy too. Yeah. So, well, we got five minutes left, Wade. Um, um you want to talk NBA real quick, or what do you want to? Yeah, well, I would ask this. I just need one answer. I don't need an explanation. I don't want to know why you think this. I just need your answer. Jordan or LeBron, who's better? (laughs) No explanation. I just need to know. Michael Jordan. Wrong. (laughs) Wrong. But, yeah, let's talk NBA for a bit. Um, This playoffs has been great, man. It's It's been fun to watch. Bad, the NBA, it's, it's 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 wide open. Yeah, perfect timing for the Pelicans and the Mavericks to not be in the playoffs when it's literally wide open. I mean, the fact that Milwaukee, I know Giannis got hurt, but the fact that they're down 3-1 right now is insane. And then the fact that Boston let Atlanta come into the garden in an elimination game without DeJounte Murray and when that game is insane. Unreal. I mean, it's crazy how many leads have been given up and how – I was talking about this before you came on. Um, it's just it's just been a great it's been a great playoffs, and everyone talks about uh, how um, much the NBA sucks compared to like college basketball, or how the regular season sucks, and all that stuff, which is true. I mean, the regular season does like it doesn't mean anything. I, I buy all that, but these playoff games have been unreal. I mean, mm-hmm. Jimmy Butler performance oh. two nights ago, 
Um, what the Lakers have been able to do. Uh, the Sacramento Kings. Yeah, I mean, dude, I mean. Going toe-to-toe with the dynasty. I just feel so bad for Sacramento with Darren Fox going down. And I, the think Warriors he, I think he's, he's, he's going to try and play tonight, though. Broken well. finger cap. Tip of the finger, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how effective he is on his shooting hand. We'll see. But there, there's real parity in the NBA. So, like, like if you look at, like, seven years ago or whatever, that little span, it was just the Cavs and the Warriors. And that was really entertaining. It was fun. But the whole time everybody was complaining, there needs to be parity. It's just these two teams that are so good. And now there really finally is parity. Like, I don't know who the hell is going to win the finals. Well, I Angels, think it's Lakers. probably – I think it's probably going to be the Celtics, but incorrect. They're losing to Philly. It's okay though. They're losing to Philly. It's all right. Philly. I don't know. They're losing to Philly. It's, it's okay. just. I mean the. I mean Cleveland coming in with the number one defense, and then they just let the Knicks come in and take a three-one lead on them. It's pretty crazy. It's been it's just been a wild been a wild run, wild playoffs. Um, I was going to ask you something. I can't remember. Oh, oh, this is okay. So this is what I was talking about before you came on. Um, with just overall like value, playoff value, like ability to lead a team, availability, all that stuff. Who are you taking, Jimmy Butler or Kawhi Leonard? I mean, like the obvious, and I mean, I mean it's Kawhi. But like what you're is saying it? is availabil- availability. I mean, Kawhi's knee, I think, is completely. Am I allowed? He's. I can curse on this. Sure, why not? Yeah. Well, I mean, his knee's fucked. Like, yeah. I, I, this no. is three or four years in a row where his knee has failed him. So I don't really know what the rest of his career looks like. But when he is fully ready to go, he is. Oh, he's top. unreal. He's the best two way in the league. Which I get, I yeah, get all that, I mean, but he's, I mean, he doesn't play the regular season. He's hurt in the playoffs, and Jimmy Butler has been for the last. I mean, he uses the bubble, right? When he, when he, when they went to, when he was single handedly beating the Lakers, or no, the year after. No, that was that. That was that year. The bubble. Yeah, the that bubble? was the bubble, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, was, I'm team, and probably it's. I was no, I really there. like Jimmy Butler. It's probably recency bias a little bit since Jimmy just went off and Kawhi's not playing. So that could be part of it. And obviously Kawhi had that big run in Toronto, but I don't know. Kind of yeah. interesting. Well, yeah. we're running out of time here. Thanks for coming on. It was, a, it was an absolute it pleasure is. having you. Uh, uh, thank you for having me, and I'm very happy to come back on anytime. Yeah, man. We'll definitely have to get Talk you back whatever. on. We have a little bit more time. Uh, uh-huh. I know everyone that's watching is really enjoying having you, and All hopefully right. we'll get some had, more guests if you on. Had, if you had one bet tonight, bet tonight for these NBA games, what would it be? Uh, okay, well, two of them already started. So the Bucks Heat, and then the who wins tonight? Warriors or Kings? Kings. Kings win tonight. They go back to San Francisco. Warriors win that one. They go back to LA, or they go back to Sacramento. Warriors win that one. Warriors in seven. I, I kind of agree with that. And I don't know how effective the is going to be, but a LeBron James, Steph Curry playoff series is what everyone wants, what the league wants, is what Adam Silver wants. That's what we're going to get. So, well, yeah. you got anything you want to say before we get cut off here? Um, no. Thanks for having me on. Hey, man, it was a pleasure. We'll be we'll see you soon for sure. I'll sure I'll see you tomorrow. Whatever. But we love to have you back on. It's been a pleasure, and yeah, Sounds talk good. to you soon. All right, see you, Kyle. Take it easy, bro. Gosh, what a great guy. Absolutely love Wayne. How can you not? How can you not love Wade, man? He's definitely coming back. He was he was good to have. Um that was a way, way, way longer segment than I wanted to have with him. But I think I think everyone was kinda of glad we had it, so uh let's see. Still, yeah. Um, well, I guess we'll end it there. I want to talk about uh Roger just for a second, but we uh obviously ran out of time today. Great show today, loved having Wade on. Good talks. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about Aaron Rodgers tomorrow. 
Uh, yeah. If you uh, if you liked what you heard today, subscribe. Love to have you around. Every day, five thirty, we're gonna be going live. Uh, more guests to come for sure. Guests to make it fun. Guests makes it interesting. So, yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, Daily Sports Kick brought to you by Hit the Horn Podcast. I'm Will Compton. See.